So we can see the grain. The grain is running like this. So this is the center of the tree was probably right over here. Okay, this is right off the pit. The pit was probably somewhere over here. So it's safe. This is almost a flat ring, so it's this is considered the face. We can tap in this direction. Uh, or this, this is a better direction to tap in from because the threads are laying, I'm sorry, the grain rings are laying flatter. So we're going to put in the, in the chuck in this direction here. Bring the tailstock off, off the piece. Tool wrist can stay where it's at, it's, it's in a good place. I'm going to restart it up. I'm just going to clean up the face just a little bit, pull it fully closed. I'm going to make a little pivot there. Okay, on the male threads, we're going to duplicate this part to look just like this. And I'm going to chase it, chase the threads with this one and one quarter eight die that I bought. And I just put a little handle on it for my leverage. And I'm going to chase the threads with this die. Okay, in the beginning, for one and a quarter inch threads, you need maybe 1.20, 1.15 OD to have for, for, your, for your threads, for your die. So in the beginning, when I was doing this, I was cutting it, measuring, cutting, measuring, measuring, cutting to get my final diameter. Then I got to thinking, you know, why not do it with a hole saw? So this is just a standard hole saw. This one actually came from Home Depot. This is a Milwaukee brand. And uh, probably do the overhead, Tom. Okay. So I decided to use, thought about it, using a hole saw to cut my outside diameter. So this is a one and three eighths hole saw Milwaukee, Home Depot. I got one from Lowe's also too. I forget the brand, Linux or something like that. They're both very similar. So the wall thickness on this piece is roughly a sixteenth. So that gets us down to the one and a quarter. Okay, that's still a little bit big. So what you do is a Dremel or some other tool with a stone on it. You got to, you take it apart. Just, just on the back unscrews, there's a set screw right here. Take you a stone with the drill bit not in there and just just kind of kiss that inside, bring it around. And what you're doing is getting rid of the curve on the inside. And so you'll do that, make a test cut, check your diameter. If it's still a little bit big, do it again. Just kind of just keep on moving it even so you so this comes, this one will, will cut about 1.20 roughly. Also a lot of it depends on how on center everything is. You know, you can't leave it out sometimes, you know, you're, you're not quite on center so your hole, this might be one, this might be something, but what it's cutting over here might be something a little different. So we're going to cut about a half inch deep with this tool. Now there's no curve on the inside. And so, I don't want to cut the whole piece with all the wood in there, plus I want to save my bed and everything else, so I, I bring this up and I will make a mark, I'll make a mark for me to cut. So, face shield down, this is all set again. Anytime you got a Jacobs chuck in your hole, always hold on to it. So we're going to turn the leg down, bring the speed up. Nothing crazy. This is probably four or five hundred. Bring the tailstock up. 
So it's pretty close. You, you want to have it tight when you go in there because the drill bits, they love to walk. So I'm just going in there and I'm just going to end it. So I brought the hole saw up and made a little indentation so that inside shoulder is actually my OD. So I'm just going to bring it down, get rid of all this wood for about a half inch deep. Speed up the lathe a little bit. Okay, that's about a half inch deep. Okay, so now what we'll do, bring the hole saw back up. It's inside that hole, tighten it, and we are going to Now we have a OD for our tap. Stop the way for a second. We're through with we're through with this one. Tool rest is pretty good shape still. So now what I'm going to do is with a parting tool, clean up my shoulder where I have a nice square shoulder. I'm going to chamfer the uh, the leading edge of it so the die has a nice place to start. Put mineral oil on it. Then we will uh, tap it. Start the length up, clean up the shoulder a little bit. My negative rake scraper, my smooth, just taking that edge off. Now we're going to kill the lathe or stop the lathe, not kill it. Uh, mineral oil again. We're, okay, on my lathe, this, this just slips over the quill. I'll have to hold it with my third hand on this one. And what that does, you want to keep the die straight. Got the leading edge right there, ready to start. Okay, there's hardly no pressure on here. I just want to I just want to make sure my die is straight. If this was to slip over there, it's a lot easier. You don't need to start hand. So I'm gonna lock the headstock. Okay, a little bit of pressure. Put just a little bit of more of the mineral oil in there. And as I turn, very little pressure on the tailstock. You're going to bring it all the way up to the shoulder, right there. If anything goes wrong, it usually goes wrong right here, breaking that chip. Uh, every now and then too, it's a lot of pressure. Your chuck wants to back up. Sometimes you have to put the key in there to hold the chuck. It starts out easy, but there's a chip in there you've got to break without snapping the whole thing off. And you have to do this before you drill that hole because there's not enough wood there if you were to drill the hole first. Okay, so we got some pretty decent threads. Just to double check that. Got really clean threads. I'll unlock the headstock. Now remember what we're talking about perfect and imperfect threads. On this particular piece, we only have perfect threads. 
for maybe the first eighth or three sixteenths in there, then it goes imperfect. On this particular piece, we're perfect out here, but we're imperfect in there because the, the die has not had a chance to cut all the threads. And also too on the bottom, it didn't cut at all, so you always have to undercut when you're making threads, on, especially on a shoulder. You have to undercut that last thread. And we will do that with a, a parting tool. And I'll do a narrower one. I mean, it's an eighth inch, hundred thousandths parting tool. So everything's good here. I'm going to put my face shield down, start up the leg. And I will just barely undercut that shoulder. We're only going to go as deep as the valley of the thread. Okay, so if we were to test this now, we're not going to make it all the way down. Because first of all, we ran into this shoulder. So we need to undercut that. Because we, we drilled one and three quarters here, so we need to get just a little bit under one and three quarters. We're actually sitting about we're one, we're a hundred thousandths big, we're one and eight hundred and fifty thousand. So we're gonna take that under just a little bit. And we're gonna test it again. This goes back and forth for a little while. So I just want to take a hundred thousandths off. Test it. Okay, we're in. The shoulder's in, but we're not sitting on a, We're not sitting on the shoulder. We're, what it is, the threads are getting tight, and we need we need this shoulder here to rest against this shoulder here to do the top. Otherwise, there's a very good chance. We will snap off the thread. So what I'm going to do is shorten the top now just a little bit, maybe about an eighth or so. Face shield down. And I'm going to chamfer that first thread so it's not sharp. Okay. Stop it. There's a, right there's the shoulder. We got a really good hard stop. We're going to take it down just a little bit more. Then face shield down. Take another sixteenth or so off. Okay, while we're in this position, we're going to finish the top. Okay, this is a one-way live center here. I actually have just a wooden piece, three-quarter twelve threads on there. That way the point does not drive into my piece in case you want to take the top of the acorn, finial, whatever it is all the way to the top. And actually, if you cone it like that, if you have a finial, you can bring that all the way up after you get the bottom part of the finial done. Bring this up, it gives you a little bit of support. I think it's three, I think it's three quarter 10 on that. Three quarter 10, yes, three quarter 10 thread. So now I'm gonna bring this up. The, the shoulders are against each other. I'm inside, I'm inside the shoulder and the shoulders are flat. And I'm gonna bring this up not crazy tight, but a little bit, because I do not want to get it. First of all, we do not want to catch at this point, because we'll smoke our threads. Uh, and we're going to take nice, easy cuts to remove remove these edges to create the finial. And if we remember, we're one inch deep, so our hole is right right about here is where our hole is. So we just got to be, and it's a. Uh, one and, a, one and an eighth inch diameter there, so we just have to be careful. 
we don't uh, run out right there. Other than that, we'll just shape it. That's why you turn it before you start it, because that would have smoked it. Face shield down, bring it up to speed. I'm just going to make light, light, easy cuts. And the top is done, unless there's other ways to scallop and so forth. Another, sometimes your top will get jammed on there pretty hard and you just can't get it off. Uh, I've gotten them off with a pipe wrench. Just put a piece of sandpaper around here as lightly as you can. Grab it with a pipe wrench or a channel lock to take it off. But uh, our top is complete. We can remove the tailstock. And we're going to drill the center out with a 7 8 inch Forstner bit. I've tried the 7 8 inch drill bit. It's too aggressive. I've tried 1 inch. The walls are too thin. Uh, so we're going to drill this with a 7 8 We're going to go to about an inch and a quarter deep. Uh, I just go that deep. It's no magic number. It's just that's how deep I go, and it, it doesn't really matter because hardly nothing fits in there. But uh, so we'll bring it up, slow our speed down, make sure we're good here. This is all stopped. Bring our speed up, face shield down, and again about 400 RPMs. When you're drilling with a Jacobs chuck, always hold on to this. If you don't, if you don't see your chips coming out. See how they packed in there? You want to uh, bring it out because the next thing that's going to happen, you're going to get into a bind. Let's just double check. We're about an inch and an eighth, so we're going to call it. That's deep enough. We're done with this. The hard stuff is the hard stuff is over. Bring the, bring the tool rest up, and now what we're going to do is shape the bottom.
Okay, so we're that part's done. So now we're just going to part it off. I'm going to part this one off. I'm just going to go straight down here because my hole is right to. I got plenty of room. Everything's out of the way. Face shield down. Start to lay. The part tool starts getting in a little bit of a bind. The wood's growing up around it. Make a little bit of a leaf shut on the side. There's our, uh, the bottom. I'm going to stop it. Wait for everything to stop. Bring the tool rest out. Take out the piece of scrap. So I, I have a bunch of these for different occasions. So this is a one and a quarter, both ends. Also got a, a tenon on there, since this is a metric, mine won't spin up on it, so I'm gonna pick up on the threads. But this allows me to put the bottom in there. Bottom in there. Remember, we're only inch and a quarter deep. And again, I, I put a tailstock on here just just for a little bit while I'm making my big cut. And I got a little bit of pressure on it because I want that pressure against the shoulder. I don't want the pressure on the threads. Okay, that all looks good. Face shield down. We'll bring up speed. It, bring the tail stock off of it, and then we'll just shape the pump. been turning for about an hour. This uh, piece over here has been in the oven drying. The threads worked right before we, so I'm going to go get it out of the oven. We'll just look at the threads for a second. The oven set on about one, 165 or so. I'm not 100% sure if it's been in there long enough. All right, they're in a bind right here. That spun up earlier. My wood showed it was dry, but the inside was more than likely not dry. This is the one I just made. It's in a bind. So it comes out of the oven the next day or two hours later. You'll run that die tap, this is a tap, we'll run that tap back in there and we'll get a little bit of wood. But that's enough wood to keep the threads working through the seasons. We got, that's what I got out of it. So now this piece, Feel it cutting a little bit after I make that first pass. Yes. So we're just going to run that die up there. We ran it up there once. We could feel a little bit of resistance. We're not feeling any more resistance anymore. So this is a minute ago. This was not working. Now it's working. So to me, we've chased these threads in a wet and a 
with a little bit of moisture content and a dry moisture content. And so this acorn, and, and that's what I've found out is my, my acorns will, doing it this way, will uh, they'll work through your seasons. They won't get in a bind after you. That's the process of threading acorns the easy way. There is an article coming out in the AAW that's going to coincide with this video, uh, which is not sure on the dates when they'll be coming out, but uh, there's an article on this process. And if you uh, have any questions, you know, email me or, or uh, email me with any questions. Thank you.